First of all, a big welcome to everyone. Uh, thanks for attending the course. The way, uh, as you all know, that this will be, this is an overview of B31.3 and its requirements. It will be split into two sessions, one today and one on uh, coming Saturday, the 25th. Now, B31.3 is quite a vast code, and it is certainly not possible to cover each and every aspect of the code in a span of four hours. So what have the way I've structured the presentations presentations rather is like this that today I'm going to cover chapter two, the design, but it will not just be chapter two. it is uh, it'll be of course chapter two means it'll be by and large focused on stress analysis. It is also going to talk in detail about uh, Appendix W, the high cycle aspect of B31.3, then B31J. I'm also going to touch upon <clears throat> category M fluid, high purity service, elevation, elevated temperature service, etc. So, uh, so that's the structure for today. And uh, there will be two PowerPoints. One is basically focusing on chapter two and whatever additional thing that is kind of tagged with chapter two and there'll be a separate presentation or a separate powerpoint on chapter nine the high pressure piping in the next session that is on 25th i will be covering um, chapter three materials and then uh, testing including some aspects of fabrication the topic I'm not going to speak on is on uh, non-metallic piping and the reason being B31.3, and we will talk about it as we go in detail, B31.3 is not the code for that. Be it glass reinforced piping, for which certainly B31.3 is not the code because uh, it is an orthotropic material. And as I know that an isotropic material, the pr properties don't change its direction. An orthotropic material is not the, that case. And the failure theories are different. The failure theories that we, we talk about, you know, trace curve on minuses, et cetera, they are not applicable. There are multiple failure theories, intensification factors, flexibility factor formulas that we have, even if they're in B31J, they are not applicable. And this also includes uh, HDP piping, even though HDP is that way not a non-isotropic material, but HDP analysis has got some nuances which are not addressed in B31.3. I'm also not going to talk about bellows because that is a separate topic by itself. So with this, I start the presentation. Before I uh, start sharing the slides, what I want to say is that this presentation or these two presentations that you're going to have over two weeks they are basically of course they're going to tell you what is there in the code and i'm going to reference the 2024 the latest edition of v313 but the storytelling will be basically for you to understand why those rules are there what is the science behind those rules that gives an analyst a piping engineer or an engineer to basically understand their strength and limitations. Ultimately, we want to do a design which is safe and which is cost effective. So over design has to be avoided and under design also has to be avoided and understanding the background of the code rules really helps us. I have provided, uh, you know, normally when, we, we all are professionals. We know that when we make a PowerPoint presentation, they are basically the bullet points and we speak on the bullet points. But the way I have structured the presentation is that the PowerPoints are heavily loaded in the sense there's a lot of information in the PowerPoints, contrary to the usual way PowerPoints are used. And the, the reason behind that is that this is your course material. So there is all the information that I want to convey to you if I have to just write some, you know, a Word document for the course material, everything is there. Additionally, I'm sure that uh, there will be a lot of information that you have to process over the next two hours or four hours if we talk about the two weeks that uh, the presentation will be there. 